Hello, everyone. We're back with another episode of LMS Cast. I'm Joshua Millage, and I'm joined with Christopher Badgett. And today we're going to be answering some of the more technical definitions that you might come across when you're researching an LMS. So LMS stands for Learning Management System, and we're active in that space with our Lifter LMS plugin, which is a WordPress plug plugin that allows you to take WordPress and create a learning management system. But today we're going to be talking about something that works hand in hand with that, which is an L. RS. And so Chris, tell us what that acronym means and why it is maybe important to some of our listeners. All right. Well, this is where it gets a little heavy in the e-learning space and you may be graduating from being a solo entrepreneur and getting more a little more institutional or trying to have different systems talk to each other. You're basically getting a little bigger and your needs start changing. One of the things we've noticed with the Lifter LMS plugin and with our clients in the e-learning space is that <clears throat> over time people's needs tend to get pretty custom. One of those needs is to be able to store data that happened uh, from the learning environment and maybe collect that data from different places. Maybe there's multiple LMSs in action and you want to store data in one place either for re reporting or just to house that, that data, which you could do all types of things with. So that's what a learning record store is, as opposed to the learning management system, which is kind of the front end delivery of the educational content. The learning record store is the house for all the data. Some of that data could come from a learning management system. Uh, some of it could come from even like a, a live event. All, data can come from all kinds of places and then it can be stored in that LRS. Got it. And Chris, just so the listeners understand, what we're talking about here is is an advanced topic, like you said. And so I don't want people who are just starting out just trying to create a course online to think that this is something that they automatically need. I, I, I personally don't feel like it is. It's more of an advanced thing. You're probably a larger business or maybe an educational institution that um, that type of person is who's going to be utilizing this. Correct? Am I correct in thinking that? or? Absolutely. I mean... You can grab data from a, a LMS, uh, like an online learning management system with Lifter, or any other learning management system solution. You could also be pulling data from a virtual world or a game or these in-person events. When someone's recording your at attendance, that data can go into the LRS. Mm -hmm. So it's for more complex situations where that reporting and that uh, data integrity and tracking is really important. Right on. That's awesome. Well, I, I think this is something that as people grow, um, I see a progression happening where someone who's saying, who says maybe he's a, an expert in like um, local marketing, you know, local business marketing. And as he grows as a, um, an e-learning education entrepreneur, he gets more credibility. And then a college comes along and says, hey, we want to take your information and we want to actually put some accreditation around it so that your people, if they come to your course online and take your course, we want that to actually count as credits in our degree. And then that is where an LRS really makes sense because he's going to need to take that data and pipe it through to their records store, their LRS system. So just to give people a use case as I understand it. And again, I'm always learning. Um, Chris here is our in-house expert. <laughs> but Well, when, when it comes to the uh, learning record stores and the 10 can API and things like that, I'm still learning too, but I have been around it a bit. And we definitely hear it a lot with the Lifter LMS community. There's a, mm -hmm. a section of the group that is interested in compatibility with the 10 can API or different types of learning record store systems, whether it's on your LMS or externally somewhere else. Right, right, absolutely. I think it's really useful. And you know, Chris, next episode, we're actually gonna dive into what the Tin Can API is. Can you give us a little preview, just a high level of like, what is that? Because that's really important when we're talking about an LRS. Absolutely, so the Tin Can API is essentially a, a way to communicate uh, through statements that a learning activity happened and send that statement to the learning record store to record that data. So it's an API is kind of like a way for different softwares or technologies to talk to each other. So the mm -hmm. an API is kind of like that tunnel between the LMS, like this student completed this course 
you know, and it, it that's like a statement that goes to the right uh, to the LRS, and that's you know we one of the things that's been our goal here at LMS Cast is we want to get a tried and true tin can API expert on the show and really unpack it and get into great detail with it. So um, yeah, if if anybody listening to this is uh, considers yourself a tin can API or experience API expert or wants to make an introduction we we'd love to do that and love to have that person on the show absolutely and i think the the thing that i want to say is to to kind of uh, make it even simpler is i've always looked at it as like a telephone communication system so like the lms would call the lrs via the api and that api the tin can api would be the connection between the two so it would use the api and say hey we've got chris's record for you he aced this quiz put it in his profile as acing the quiz in your LRS. And that's that's just a simple way that I've kind of, uh, of all the technical things that I've read, that's how I understand it. And um, I think that's pretty accurate as to what it does. It's a standard though. So it's, it's a way of um, standardizing the industry so that a bunch of different LMSs can communicate with a bunch of different LRSs. Um, so it's exciting things, man. I mean, we're such we're on such of the I think the dawn of this revolution. I don't think we're that far into it, and um, these things are shifting. You know, I remember um, when I was a young lad. Uh, USB was being questioned as a standard, right? And now we don't right. even question it. And there was other players out there. There was FireWire and there was all of these ways of communicating. And uh, and it, as time went on, things solidified. So I think right now what I see is, is the Tin Can API being the true um, winner, but who knows? Who knows what's around the corner? So we'll keep everyone up to date on that though as time progresses. It's exciting to do this podcast and share what we're learning with the community and um, we're always excited to hear your thoughts. You can find this episode at lmscast.com and uh, I would encourage all of you to go check out our site anyway. There's a lot of other information on there Um, and subscribe to our email newsletter because we're going to be emailing a lot of other news outside of podcast news there with um, blog posts and case studies that we're doing, um, plug-in comparisons so you can understand the differences between, you know, Lifter LMS and the other plugins in the WordPress community. And uh, we're just going to create the highest quality blog and podcast news outlet for the LMS industry and uh, really do our part in supporting the community with good information. So I'm excited about that. That's a little bit of the vision that we have for this new year. And um, I'm excited for everyone to take the journey with us. So Chris, any closing thoughts for the crew? Yeah, I would just say if uh, you know, you're just kind of getting comfortable with a learning management system for instead of a membership site and e-commerce and selling online courses, don't feel like you have to jump right in and understand the LRS or the Tin Can API because even like for example with our Lifter LMS plugin, we have there is data that is stored there about the users. Mm-hmm. There is uh, you know, certificates. Right now we're currently building out our analytic system so that you can look at data that's happening in your learning management system. So LRS and tin can stuff is, is more advanced and complex. So you you don't have to start there is all I'm saying. So I think it's a great, great footnote. We want to keep people in the know of what's happening, but at the same time, know that they don't have to go to this extreme quite yet. You can be extremely effective with just a simple WordPress site and uh, a plugin like lifter LMS. So, Awesome. Well, on that, we are going to close this episode up. And uh, next episode, we will be talking to you more in depth about the Tin Can API, what that's all about, and why it's important to know about it. So thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.